Hey Cloud Gamers, today I'm going to talk to you about Maximum Settings, probably Shadow PC's biggest rival right now, even though they didn't know it yet. Full disclosure, Maximum Settings did give me full access to their top tier rig for this video, but they have not sponsored this video. As you can see here from the website, the prices are in Canadian dollars, so do bear that in mind. There's some AMD rigs coming. But it's the GeForce rigs that we are interested in, so the middle tier here is actually the shadow equivalent. However, they come with a massive amount of mechanical storage, so 2 terabytes in the middle tier, and 3 terabytes and a 500 gig SSD on the GeForce RTX 2080 Super Rig, which is what you're going to see in most of this comparison. So this works a little bit differently, you have to log into the website and start your rig initially. It has an hour auto shutdown currently if you are not using it. As it's pay per hour, you probably want to be shutting it down before then. It has an inbuilt console, which is a basic remote control system that you're going to want to use just to get your own RPC client on there. Uh, I use TeamViewer, for example. Or you can use this just to set up Moonlight. And that is going to be your main way of actually playing the game. So it comes pre-installed with GeForce Experience and a few other bits and pieces. And if you use GeForce Experience out of the box, then you are able to use Moonlight, which I'll come on to shortly. It has some great usage reports, so you can see exactly the amount of time that you're using and what you're spending. As you can see, I really did like this rig. I was spent a lot of time in here. And I am absolutely impressed with both their customer service and their actual machine. Shadow really needs to watch out here. You also have the ability to switch your tiers from within the console. So if you want to downscale or upscale, you can do that directly. Moving over to the game launcher. I used Moonlight. I found it the easiest one to set up. So to do this, you use that remote control client console on the browser. Download Moonlight to your Mac, your PC, your phone. And then you just put in the IP address from this window and then you can set up GeForce Experience to do the shield play for you. You can see here the ones with icons are the directly supported ones through NVIDIA Shield. The ones that aren't you can add manually, which I'll come into in just a second. So you can add the MSTC XE from the Windows folder and then that gives you essentially a remote desktop. So you can do it all through the same place. The one caveat is for some reason Moonlight does not support the Windows key, so if you're trying to do commands with that contain Windows key, then you need to use a different remote desktop client, hence why I use one of the others. So as I said, you can install the games and it will get recognized by GeForce Experience, but for the games that you don't see in the launcher, if you want to do them directly, you can go to the Shield section here and just add the XEs. So I added the game launchers for each one so I could bypass the remote desktop section and it just automatically launched the launcher for me. So once I opened the remote desktop, it gave me the launcher and I could just pick the game that I wanted to launch, which you'll see here. I'm adding the Uplay launcher and then I can just launch one of the games. It does come with a massive amount of storage. You've got that. You've got the game cache. SSD, which is 512 on this rig, and then a 3 terabyte mechanical game cache and it really does make a huge difference. As you can see I've got eight games installed here and it's not sweating at all. This means that you can really pick up any game that you want on the fly and this Moonlight service does work extremely well as well. As you can see from this config section you really do have a lot of control over all of the settings. For the stream settings you can set high resolution. You can see I'm running at 1440p and you can really up the frames per second as well. From the client, you can change all of these settings. You have vSync enabled, you can choose the codecs, and because I was on Mac, the HEVC codec was running fantastically. You can choose the 1440 for the native and then just launch back in, and those settings are picked up instantly. You do have finite control over the bitrate as well, and I think the bitrate goes up to 120 megabits per second. So you can choose to stream that 4K image in all of its glory if you have the bandwidth to do so. Otherwise you can downscale it and it works beautifully. I must admit, after using Shadow Boost for some time, maximum settings is a go-to for me. My only downside is that because it's in Canada, I have a 110 millisecond ping, 
which doesn't actually show too badly in a lot of the AAA games, but is highly noticeable on the desktop. And in some of the first person shooters, you do notice that little bit of delay, but definitely not 110 milliseconds worth. Probably feels like that 50, 60 millisecond latency. Shadow really needs to watch out here and hopefully they'll get their rigs sorted soon. But if you are on the East Coast US or in Canada, you are going to have a low ping and this service is going to be phenomenal for you. As I said, for the equivalent price of the top end rigs, so Shadow was around $50 a month. That would get you around 80 hours of this rig, which unless you are gaming for 5-10 hours a day, you are not going to hit that 80 hours a month. So it is well worth it. I'm going to move on to some gameplay demos now so you can see just how good the rig plays. Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition is one of those games that makes most graphics cards cry just by mentioning its name. I originally bought the 1060 in my local rig to try and play this game and even then with my old DDR3 RAM and my old CPU this game struggled to run at anything beyond medium settings playable. So when I got the chance to run this on the 2080 rig I was very happy. Although as you can see I have maxed out all the settings it does look fantastic but it is struggling still to hold 60 frames per second even on the 2080 with 24 gig of RAM. So that just goes to show how intense this game is. And I do have all the Nvidia true hair and all the extra settings enabled. But as you'll see as we start driving here, struggling at that 60 frames per second still. Although this is at 1440p, so at 1920 by 1080 it will probably hold a higher frame rate but if you do want to get the most out of those graphics I think it will struggle even more at 4k. Final Fantasy 15 really pushing graphics to the limit here but it does look absolutely fantastic and I think this will be my go-to for playing this game now over Stadia or Shadow. Moving over to Hyperscape, again this is running at the max ultra settings with everything pushed to the limit on 1440p and you can see here that it's holding over 80 frames per second, 90 frames per second there as we're dropping into the molecular. To be honest this plays absolutely fantastic on most rigs but at 1440p in ultra settings it does look absolutely fantastic on the 2080 rig from maximum settings and it was an absolute joy to play. If it wasn't for the high ping for me because of the Canadian rig, uh, I rechecked recently and I'm getting around the 95 to 100 ping. It is noticeable a little bit on the twitch movements, but if I could have that lower ping I would be on this all of the time. So enjoy a bit of gameplay here and my poor shooting. Isn't it safe to be empty handed? Take this. We're down to fifty. Moving over to some control gameplay, here we've got everything maxed out with DLSS and ray tracing at max. 
we can see the 2080 is struggling a little bit to keep the 60 frames per second when we start hitting some enemies. But overall it does look and play fantastic. I don't remember the GeForce now dropping that low on the frame rates on the 2080 rig. So I may need to go back and run a comparison side by side here. As you can see we're dropping it into the 50s during these gunfights. Again a 144 TP. I'd have to drop the resolution down to 1920 by 1080 to compare with GeForce now and then the frame rates will most likely be a bit higher. So enjoy a bit of 1440p high quality gameplay here from Control and then we'll move on to the next game. Moving on to some Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone footage then, uh, again at 1440p, we can see as we're about to jump out of the plane we're still holding 80 frames per second plus, and for some reason I didn't really notice the impact like that much here, even though I know my ping to the box is around 100 milliseconds. It did feel very smooth and as you'll see once I've landed and start running around, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's definitely the best that I've seen this game. It's such a shame that this isn't available on something like GeForce now. And although Shadow Boost does run this game extremely well, having the 2080 and having all those ultra settings enabled does make a huge difference. Look at the draw distance there, the smoke effects off of the players, the trees and the foliage. It just looks absolutely stunning. And I do think that Modern Warfare Warzone it's one of the best optimized battle royale games out there, except for Hyperscape. However, Hyperscape is not showing the kind of realism that is in Warzone. Enjoy some of the gameplay footage here running around. I could have spent hours on this, and I have spent hours on this on the 2080 rig. Occasionally you do see that input lag, but again, if you are on the East Coast US or in Canada, you are going to have such a low ping on this rig that it will be noticeable and it'll be just like playing a local break. I can't wait for these guys to come to Europe. Enjoy and then we're going to move on to some mobile gameplay. This is a comparison with Shadow, and on Shadow you can play on mobile with a virtual controller or PS4 controllers etc on Android. I thought it was only fair to see how maximum settings could match up on this. Again, using Moonlight on iOS and Android, you have iOS on the right using the virtual controller, and Android on the left with the PS4 controller. I was very surprised to see that the PS4 controller is fully supported on Android. Unfortunately, Moonlight does not support the recording of audio on Android at this time, so that's why the Android footage is silent. But the iOS footage is more than usable with the virtual controller. I was able to use the PS4 controller, but it was hit or miss how I entered the game and whether it got supported. 
and I just found it a little bit easier to use virtual controller on iOS for some reason. Hopefully they will come with better support for the controllers on iOS, but for now Android is definitely the better way to play on mobile, full stop. Rounding off the mobile no footage then, done. here is Final Fantasy XV, the Windows edition with all those ultra settings being streamed directly to iOS. As you can see it's using the virtual controller again and it does look absolutely fantastic and streams as if it was on the mobile itself. I'm thoroughly impressed with the Moonlight engine as well as the power of the 2080 rig and I highly recommend maximum settings going forwards. You are most likely going to see a lot more of the 2080 rig in comparisons moving forwards. I'm only envious of those on the East Coast US and Canada who are going to be able to jump into these 2080 rigs as if they were native. Maximum settings are looking to come to Europe within the next year and who knows I may actually end up with a 2080 Europe rig before Shadow PC actually gets their rigs together. Regardless of where you are in the US, test out your ping by using the command prompt or terminal and run a ping to maximumsettings.com and if you're seeing a ping of under 50 milliseconds then I would jump on these rigs while you can. They are plentiful and you are going to get activated within days instead of months like Shadow PC. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe to Cloud Gaming Extreme for all of the latest across all cloud gaming platforms and I will see you next time. My head just started throbbing. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine.